I got this many years ago from Richard Buffum. I don't know how many people here remember Richard Buffum. Do you remember him? Yeah. Richard Buffum was a collector of Victorian magic. And uh, he lived on Lido Island in Newport Beach. And I used to go down to his house and muck around in his garage. And he had this amazing garage, not unlike this one, that was stuffed full of all sorts of strange projects that he was working on. Most of them had to do with Victorian magic. And one time when I was down there, he showed me this box. And uh, I said, wow, well, look at those things that are inside there. He said, yes, those were part of a collection. So I'm going to open the top so that you can see what's inside. Okay. Is that the video? Can the, vi the video see okay? Probably not. But So these all belong to Captain, uh, Captain McBain. Okay. And I don't know if you've ever been to Magic Island years ago when Magic Island was open in Newport Beach. There was actually a seance uh, that was about Captain McBain. Uh, so through Richard Buffum, well, Richard gave me this box and then he started to tell me about Captain McBain. Captain McBain was a, a, a seagoing guy. He was in the Merchant Marines for many years and he had a house in Newport Beach it was this ramshackle place, like a barn, and uh, people didn't like to go near it because it was just dirty and decrepit. And uh, he managed to get this box from Captain McBain. And when he gave it to me, and he gave me this box, he just said, here, take it. And it was kind of strange the way he said that because it was almost as if he didn't want to have it around anymore. And I didn't say anything. But then later I found out why he didn't really, he wasn't especially fond of this box. Because what I did was I talked to him and I talked to my other friend Tony DeLapp, who lives in Costa Mesa, about this McBain character. And uh, so he traveled all around the world, uh, particularly in the Orient. And everywhere he went, he would buy a little curio of some kind. So his house was filled with all these uh, exotic masks and, and uh, jars full of foul-smelling things and basically like your, your Adams Family style home that he lived in by himself. So I also found out that he was a, one of the jobs he had when he was in Hong Kong was he wrote fortunes for fortune cookies, believe it or not, in English because he was only one of the few people there in that particular part of Hong Kong who knew English and they wanted to cash in on that. So he wrote fortunes but his fortunes were uncannily accurate. Meaning that uh, he would he would write something, well he, he, he basically he started off doing fortunes and his fortunes became so realistic that he just started to become a fortune teller because people didn't really want him around because he was so accurate. Like he'd write something on a little piece of paper and he'd hand it to somebody and they'd say, it would scare them, right? So he left Hong Kong, came back to America, and he lived in this house by himself. So this is part of his collection, okay? There are 14 objects in this box. Uh, one of them, this is what I discovered that Richard Buffum didn't tell me, one of them has a very powerful energy around it that can actually influence people. Now I want you to tell everybody that we have no plans, you didn't write anything down, this is the Not first time thing. you've seen this box. No. So I want you to just lean over a little bit and maybe get a good look at all of the objects in the box, okay? So you can see them and you can consider them all, because this is the strange thing about the objects in this box. As I say, one of them is very special. I don't like to say it's haunted, because that's a loaded phrase. It has to do with ghosts. But one of these objects, for whatever <laughs> reason, has this influence. It's already reached out to you, okay? Because I can see you turned away a little bit. So, now, I could be right, I could be wrong, but you might have initially looked at one object, but immediately it went to another object that grabbed you. And it's, it's pulling you towards that object right now. Yes? Uh-huh. 
So, so I'm not kidding about this. When I say the objects in this box vibrate with this energy, and not only do they vibrate with this energy, but they know things of it knows things about you. Okay? You never met it, you never held any of these in your hand, and yet one of the objects, and I'm not going to call it a cursed object, I'm just going to say there's an object in this box that for whatever reason, wherever I go and wherever I show this to people, the object seems to relate to them in some way. So literally something in this box from maybe hundreds of years ago reaches out and connects with that person. So you, you have the object in mind, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I am not going to touch anything. I want you to just reach over and take that object out and put it in my hand. Okay, the scarab. Okay, the scarab is a very, very ancient protective amulet. Okay, when people wore this, and they also use it a lot of times for worshiping the sun. So it's thousands of years old. Its symbology is at least several thousand years old. Uh, you may have seen them around. They exert an energy. And I mean, if you were going to worship something and you lived in Egypt in the desert, the sun might be a pretty good thing to worship. It's also a very strong symbol for living and dead because this is a dung beetle. It's supposed to climb underneath the ground. It changes and it becomes reincarnated and like the phoenix from the ashes, it rises up and comes out of there. So was there any particular reason why you chose the scarab? I like the color. You like the color, okay? So we're drawn to colors and things like that, okay? Seems innocuous enough. Oh, do you like the color? But maybe there's something more to that. There's, there's no way anybody could have known not only five years ago but ten years twenty a hundred years ago that you would reach out and take it. Well, I thought than, the scarab was interesting too. Right. The shape of the scarab. Yes. So but what I'm trying to say it is it was it free will or did something literally reach out. So you said you looked at one thing first and then you right. changed your mind. I looked at the crystal, the blue crystal. Okay. So color is obviously important, right? But this is what we landed on. Now, here's the fun part, okay? This is the scarab. And when I got the box, I looked at that thing for a long time. And I didn't do anything else with the box. But then at one point, I finally opened the drawer that's underneath, right? And if you would go ahead and open the drawer, you will see one slip of paper in the drawer. Can you see the piece of paper? Uh-huh. Can I take, take it out? Take, go ahead and take it out. And there is only the one slip in the drawer. Don't open it yet. It okay. is sealed for a reason, okay? Uh -huh. And the seal has to do with this. If I unfold it and read the outside <coughs> of the slip, I'm going to read it to you. you so okay. Tell me if this sounds familiar. In fact, it might have been, even been something that you've talked about with somebody recently, okay? okay? You have a deep appreciation for history and the healing arts. Does that make sense? Yes. Were you just recently talking about that to somebody yes. maybe in the, in the last day or two? Yes. Pretty weird, huh? But the weirdest thing is on the other side of the one slip that was in this drawer when I got the box. Read what it says. Egyptian scarab. Yeah. The Egyptian scarab. Kind of weird, isn't it? Kind of weird. Okay. That's it. And that's it. Okay. Yep. Thank you.